Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Wellness Ultimatum Radio Show. I'm your host, Omar Cumberbatch. Today, we welcome Stacy Chalemi to the show. Stacy is a health expert and the author of The Complete Guide to Natural Healing, a natural approach to healing the body and maintaining optimal health using herbal supplements, vitamins, minerals, fruits, vegetables, and alternative medicine. She teaches individuals how to prevent, heal, and maintain optimum health using alternative medicines, herbals, vitamins, and food. So today she's going to share her story of her life dedication to the field of health, alternative medicine, and herbal medicine. Stacey, thank you. Welcome to the show. How are you today? Good. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. I know you had a hectic week, and I didn't get to really speak to you on uh, before the show. So <laughs> first off, I, again, I uh, want to thank you for being on the show. And please tell the audience a little bit about yourself, including this hectic week, because I'm very proud to be <laughs> icing on your cake of your week. And they'll, the audience will get it after you tell the story. Well, I'm an advocate for healing the body naturally and maintaining optimal health using different herbal supplements, fruits, vegetables, and alternative medicine. Um, it's a way of life that really uh, does away with the unnecessary medications and over-the-counter drugs that pose a threat on our health and in the long run can hurt us more than help us. Um, I got into it um, many years ago. I had developed epilepsy at the age of five. I had struggled with this illness all my life, or, you know, almost Uh, Many years ago, I began uh, working for an herbalist, and I became very interested in herbals. Um, I began detoxifying my body, um, changing my lifestyle, uh, doing uh, eating differently, sleeping differently. I incorporated meditation and yoga into my life. I began cleansing my body, and um, I began doing uh, a whole bunch of things that I didn't really do before, and... um, I went from having nine seizures a month down to six seizures a month, down to five, three, one, then to none. Um, I've been seizure-free now for over 15 years. I've been living a really good life. And, um, you know, uh, having using herbals and changing your lifestyle um, can actually help any condition. Uh, and it can improve your life. And even if you don't have a condition, it could actually, you know, make you feel more energetic and less fatigue. And, you know, you could really change your, your life dramatically by just changing some of the things in your daily lifestyle. Hey, no, yeah, this is definitely a topic that I'm really interested in. And um, what exactly are herbals? Um, well, how did you really get into the whole concept of supplementing with this? Because we don't live in a society that's necessarily accepting of this. Even in our doctors, they don't really look at it in the, in the same way that a lot of you know ancient cultures used to. And I think that's definitely a problem. But how did you get into that? Well, you know, like I said, I did a lot of research on it. You know, a lot of people, um, you know, may dismiss um, herbal remedies as uh, something that's more like quackery or um, the the use of uh, botanicals. um, And, uh, you know, really, um, you know, our herbals and supplements, you know, comes all, goes all the way back into like 3000 BC. We've been using it, um, you know, for centuries. And, um, you know, it's uh, even, you know, a lot of the pharmaceutical companies, you know, they use um, they use different supplements in their medications to treat a variety of ailments. Uh, more than a quarter of all our drugs used today contain active ingredients derived from the same ancient plants, um, you know, that have been here and been used for centuries. And uh, it's estimated about nearly 80% of the, the world's population uses herbs for some aspect of primary health care in the United States. And more than 1,500 botanicals uh, are sold as dietary supplements. Um, you know, some of our top-selling uh, herbs, including garlic and ginseng and ginkgo and aloe, you know, are being used every single day by millions of people in America and all over the world. Hmm. Oh, thank you for that. Was there a turning point in particular when you knew that this stuff actually worked? Well, when I started uh, using it for myself, um, when I started uh, de- cleansing my body and detoxifying my body, I saw a huge change um, in the way I personally felt. I felt um, an increase of energy. I felt uh 
you know, I started seeing that my um, epilepsy disorder was starting to improve. Um, I still take medication, but, you know, when I was using just the medications, um, I wasn't 100% controlled. Um, when I started incorporating uh, the way um, different herbs and detoxifying my body and eating certain foods and staying away from certain foods, um, you know, I noticed a huge change when I incorporated meditation into my life. Um, you know, it really uh, brought peace into my life and calmness, and I was more focused. And, you know, stress, 90% of our illnesses are stress-related. Um, and, you know, people don't realize how much stress uh, can cause different illnesses, you know. Um you know, I saw that when I was taking cleansing my body and and taking all the impurities out of my body, and and I was using all these different herbs to help you know, myself, and when I was eating the right foods and getting enough of sleep, I saw a whole ch- uh, change in my whole body. I felt more energized. I was able to focus better. I was able to do a lot more. Um, you know, I felt I felt younger in aspect. I felt uh, my body actually. You know, I I was operating the way I did years ago. You know. As time goes on, you know, we don't, uh, most of us don't realize it, but we don't uh, produce as much, um, you know, uh, as we did when we were younger. And, you know, we don't, we don't function, you know, that is as well as we did when we were in our 20s and, you know, in our early 30s. We see a difference as we get older. And a lot, you know, a lot has to play with we're deficient in a lot of vitamins, a lot of nutrients. And, you know, these are things that we need to keep on top of, you know, because as you get older, you you know, you need to really, you know, focus on your health more and more because it does play a huge impact. You know, you want to enjoy life to the optimum. You want to enjoy as much as you can. And, you know, uh, and the way to do that is to keep yourself in tip-top shape. Correct, correct. Now, you do mention cleanses a couple times already. Like, did you do any specific types of cleanses, or this was just something that you eliminated certain things out of your diet, um, or, like, what exactly did you do to cleanse? Um, what I did is I started to use, um, I started uh, use, uh, increasing my fiber in my diet. Um, you know, we're supposed to actually get uh, 40 grams of fiber, you know, uh, daily in our diet. And, and no one really gets that much, you know, unless you really focus on it. Most people don't. Um, so I started taking um, fiber capsules. I started uh, I started taking milk thistle because it cleanses and, um, and helps the digestive system and the liver. I started to um, do uh, colon cleanses and body cleanses to flush out the toxins. I increased my uh, water intake. I started exercising more. All these things things release toxins from our body and um mm-hmm. you know drinking a lot of water is really good for you and even you know start changing your diet staying you know changing your sodium content decreasing the amount of sodium in your bo- in your body trying to stay away from those processed foods trying to eat more healthy you know maybe getting um you know trying to get two servings of fruits three servings of vegetables you know trying to eat more foods with fiber you know and uh you know, just, uh, you know, getting enough of sleep. These are all things that kind of help in the detoxification process. Now, did you go through, like, a sugar detox? Uh, or, and if not, what's your position on sugar in general? Well, sugar is like one of the worst things for you. You know, it's 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 not it's not good for anybody. Um, you know, uh, you know, when we have too much sugar in our body, too, it stores as that fat. You know, it can, it causes a lot of illnesses. Um, you know, diabetes is one of the biggest things. You know, that our nation, you know, suffers from. The, you know, we have a lot of people that suffer from diabetes, and um, you know, we really, uh, really, you know. I didn't do a sugar cleanse, but I, I what I did was is that you know I try to stay away from foods with a lot of sugar. You know, even orange juice. People drink orange juice in the morning. They don't realize how much sugar is in a glass of orange juice. You know, if you ever you know have time, look at the back of the ingredients and look how much sugar is in a you know a glass of orange juice, and you'll be shocked. You know, they say if you're trying mm-hmm. to lose weight, stay away from the orange juice because that has you know you know, a, a lot of sugar. And if you really love your orange juice, you know, maybe get like Chop 50, the ones that have like less sugar in them. But, you know, you really should, you know, people need to start really looking at the ingredients of the foods they buy when they're in the grocery store because sometimes we don't realize how many bad things are in the foods that we buy that we think are good. 
No, very true. That's, uh, you're absolutely right on point. You got to read the labels. Now, did you have your own struggles with sugar? Was that something that you were naturally not a necessarily a sugar fan, and you know, eliminating it out of your life or reducing it was it easy? Was it difficult? I, you know, I'll be honest. I I did like sugar, and the, when I was younger, I used to love everything. I, I was like, I had a uh, a sugary tongue. I, I, you know, I loved my sweets, and I enjoyed eating, you know, sugary stuff. Um, you know, I had to train myself. I had to really, you know, you have to really say at one point if you want to feel better and you don't want to feel the way you do, or you don't want to look the way you do, you have to really start making lifestyle changes. You know, so mm-hmm. you have to really, you know, um, you know, make it's a commitment. You know, feeling better, living a healthy lifestyle is a daily commitment. It's not something that you just do once in a while. And um, for me, you know, I, I had to train myself. I have to, had to, you know, teach myself not to, you know go and grab those sugary things and to compensate, you know, if I was uh, in the mood for something, you know, sweet, maybe do like applesauce with a little cinnamon on top instead of, you know, trying to grab, you know, some ice cream or, you know, or some kind of, uh, you know, candy bar or a piece of chocolate or something. Yeah, no, I know it's very difficult. Most people I know who uh, are trying to, you know, especially lose weight, that you know, sugar is always the thing that they have the most difficult thing with eliminating. And I guess that's a kind of a segue. Like, did you get into this at all? You know, obviously, you have certain things that you get, get, you know, stumble upon this. But was weight loss or anything a consideration? Like, this, was that something that you? were um, uh, interested in doing, and was there anything that supplement-wise or herbal remedies that helped assist in weight loss? With weight loss, um, I I always, you know, I always struggled with weight loss. I went up and down, up and down, up and down, and I found by um, cutting down the portions, you know, sometimes, you know, if you ever go out of the country, you'll notice that when you go to, especially like um, Western Europe, Portions are very small. You come to America, you know, you sit down in a restaurant. We have these humongous portions of food, and we're used to eating large quantities of foods. Well, the one thing, mm-hmm. you know, is portion size. That's, you know, um, that helped me. When I when I started, you know, decreasing the portions, uh, when I started, you know, um, you know, watching the foods that I ate, um, you know, also, that you know, iodine, you know, some people don't realize they, see, they hear the word iodine, they think it's bad for you, but actually taking, you know, a little iodine, um, you know, maybe two, three drops of iodine each day actually boosts the metabolism in your body. Um, hmm. You know, you get it even in a multivitamin, you know, but if you want to take a little extra, you could take a little extra, and that actually boosts your metabolism, you know, because as we get older, like, you know, our metabolism slows down, and, you know, people that have a sluggish thyroid, you know, it's very hard for them to lose weight, and, you know, they don't burn the fat, you know, it's, it, their metabolism is slow. All right. Yeah, are there any others? No, no, definitely. Are there any other supplements that uh, you recommend to for weight loss at all? You know, I, I've tried. Um, you know, I've you know, people have suggested things to me, and I've tried things. And you know, I think what, what's really good is I, I personally, for myself, I I like doing the milk thistle. I like uh, I take milk thistle. I I uh, I use fiber. Um, you know, I do uh, colon cleanses, um, and I do body cleanses. You know, and you can buy those. Um, you know, you have to just make sure you check the the ingredients in the bottles. Make sure they're not filled with fillers. You know, make sure it's a good brand. Um, you know, there's a company uh, on the website called ConsumerLab.com. They are uh, dedicated to uh, listing all the good uh, vitamin companies and supplement companies. They tell you what's good, what's bad. Um, they rate a lot of these things. So you could actually go on and find out um, which ones are good, which ones are bad, you know, if what you're thinking of buying is actually a good product or not. Oh, that's good to know. That's a great resource. I'm gonna definitely look that that up as well. Um, so, what what are some of your like go to uh, herbal remedies for just various things? What is like something that maybe be in in your kitchen cabinet that you're like you everyone should have? Well, you know, it's it's funny because sometimes you know people will go out and you know there's so many supplements and so many things on the market, and you could end up paying a fortune when you know some of your your best supplements that are inexpensive are in your actually in your own kitchen, like basil, mm-hmm. for instance. It, it can help relieve gas. It soothes uh, upset stomachs. Um, 
we have canine pepper, which is a red hot powder that's made from a tropical chili peppers, and you know it helps re- um, relieve pain by blocking the chemicals that send pain messages to the brain. Um, you know. Cinnamon, like we had mentioned about cinnamon before, cinnamon um, bark contains an oily chemical that kills a variety of illnesses, causing bacteria, and uh, in- including uh, E. coli and salmonella. And uh, you know, research shows that cinnamon is also great um, for it's able to stop the growth of um, the Asian flu virus. And many herbalists report that cinnamon. Uh, bark also helps regulate the menstrual cycle, and um, it also uh, is helpful during menopause. Um, you know, uh, we have our clove. Um, you know, oil of the clove is about 60 to 90 percent um, in general, and uh, it's very potent. Um, it's very, uh, it's very good to uh, uh, help for, um, stop tooth pain and. Um, it's one of the um, spices in, in, uh, that can help the body uh, use insulin more effectively and lower in um, blood sugar. Um, there mm-hmm. was some studies done that, you know, that it was helpful. And, you know, for people with diabetes that have high sugar, they may want to um, cook with a clove, you know, and, and use, you know, use that in their diet. You know, even the Indian culture, they use spices all the time. And they're, mm-hmm. they have a very healthy community. And one thing they do is they cook all the time with spices. They put everything in their foods, you know, and, um, you know, and it's, you know, you can easily, when you're cooking, throw a couple of spices, healthy spices in your food, and, you know, you have some nice taste going on, and it's also, it's healthy for you, too. And, you know, there's many more things, like garlic can help lower cholesterol and and blood pressure. You know, that's something that most Americans use. You know, you're making sauce, you know, you have garlic, and you can put garlic on fish, and, you know, there's so many other things that you can use garlic, and it's a a great resource that could, could help with a lot of different ailments. Now, as far as the spices go, like how important is the quality of these spices? Do you have to get an organic spice? Is it just a common one that you get in any supermarket sufficient, or is there the big difference between them? Um, you know, it's always good um, when you are buying um, spices to try to buy organic um, if you can. Uh, you know, the problem with uh, today is is we put a lot of different pesticides on our our foods and our foods that we grow, and those pesticides don't we don't know how to break those down when it gets into our body. And what happens is it throws the body chemistry completely off. So when your body chemistry is off and it has these chemicals and it doesn't it, it register to them, they start storing those those chemicals in your body. And then after mm-hmm. those chemicals build up over time. You know, this is how people come up with illnesses and, you know, you see cancers on a rise. You know, you ask yourself why. Well, look at all these things, all these pesticides, all these chemicals that, you know, that are on our foods and, you know, it's playing a toll. So if you can buy organic, I would suggest it. But you don't have to buy organic for everything. Certain things you should, but not everything. Okay, yeah, that's good to know. I thought I, thought I saw something in the news saying that McCormick, which was pretty much in every – um, supermarket or you know that I've ever <laughs> gone to. Yeah, you see them all move. over the place. Yeah, I think that they're making a move to actually going you know organic completely in their line. So I thought that's why I asked. I was wondering if uh, you might have heard about that, and if if they do so, is it going to be a better uh, selection as far as spices go? So I was definitely curious about that. Um, you know, one of the things that I wanted to get into too, like you did mention, uh, garlic for sure. How's like? I heard ginger is very good too. Is that correct? Yeah, ginger is great. Uh, ginger helps people with queasiness, motion sickness. Um, you know, uh, it, researchers have demonstrated that ginger uh, can help with uh, different types of uh, seasickness, and, you know, it's uh, very good for your digestive system, too, um, you know, and it helps relieve uh, vomiting. Everything around, like, the digestive area, if you're if you're not feeling right, if you feel off, um, it even uh, it, uh, eases uh, pain from gas, um, you know, if you're experiencing diarrhea, 
anything that has to do with um, the digestive, um, any problems or issues with uh, digestive conditions, you know, ginger is a great resource. And that's another thing that, you know, you can you could take it in a capsule, but you could actually, you know, you can buy it, you know, fresh and you can put it, you know, in your foods or even on a on a little uh, dessert. You could put a little ginger on top, and you know, and it's it's great for those things. Oh, okay, that's good to know. I heard a lot of good things about it. Um, now, what would you suggest, like, say, for people who might have like anxiety um, or suffering from depression? Like, do you have any advice for people suffering from these ailments? And is there something that you can recommend as far as supplementation or or herbal remedies for that? You know, um, today we have such a go-go society. You know, people are always on the go. People always feel um, more pressure to accomplish more things, like there's never enough hours in the day. Um, You know, the first thing I would suggest, you know, if you can incorporate meditation or yoga into your daily life, you know, a lot of people like to do it in the morning. It's a great way to start the day. Um, It actually, you know, people don't realize how effective it can be in calming the mind, body, and soul. You can really... um, you know, see an improvement um, in your anxiety and, you know, uh, but just by, um, you know, doing yoga or meditating in the morning, you don't, you know, you don't have to do it for a very long time, but if you could take, you know, 20 to 30 minutes in the morning and just focus on meditation, maybe do some poses, um, you know, in yoga, you know, and stretch your body, um, you'll notice uh, a difference in your level of anxiety as it, you'll see it decrease. You'll see, you know, a feel of calmness because a lot has to do with breathing. Meditation and yoga is based on breathing and breathing, breathing in through the nose and out through the nose in a very slow way, putting your, well, maybe one hand on your stomach, one hand on your upper chest and just breathe slowly in and out, not through the mouth, but in through the nose, out through the nose. And you'll start to see your level of anxiety decrease. It's all about taking, you know, when you breathe through the nose and you breathe out the nose, you're you're purifying your body. You're breathing in, you know, clean air and you're, you're detoxifying your inner body. And you're also bringing calmness, you know, into your body. And that's one way of helping your anxiety. Valerian root um, has been used for centuries. It's a mild sedative. Um, it is uh, very good for um, to, to get a good night's sleep, to relax. You know, that's something you might want to take at nighttime. And it's, mm-hmm. uh, it has helped a lot of people that have suffer from insomnia. Um, they have lemon balm, which is really good. Uh, a lot of people like the uh, essence oil. You know, come come in a spray bottle. You can spray it in the room or spray it on your on your wrists or on your skin a little bit. And um, it's very good. Um, uh, they use it to for, to bring some. It brings calmness and it reduces, you know, your 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 level of stress. It also helps with mood and mental calmness. You start to you know, it helps. A lot of people have said that they've seen. Um, a huge um, positive effect when they've used it. They've seen more calmness. They felt more relaxed after breathing in the the smell of lemon balm. You could also um, you could also uh, buy it in capsules, you know, and and take it like that also. But the smell of lemon balm is very relaxing. I I have actually one in my house, and I I like using the spray. I even put a little bit on my pillow, and um, before I go to bed, and it's it's nice and and very relaxing. And so, so you passion. Well, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, you could jump. I was going to say. So you're a fan of like essential oils as well. Oh yeah, essential oils are very effective. Um, you know, many people um, use essential oils. You know, not only do they have great smell to it, but you know, they have all different purposes, and you know, they're very they're very good um, for uh, you know bringing calmness and relaxation and anxiety. Lavender, for instance, is a great essence oil if you suffer from anxiety or if you're nervous. You know, it brings, it's very relaxing also. If you're looking to get a good night's sleep, if you uh, use lavender or even if you take, um, you know, Epsom salt bath with lavender uh, essence, you'll see when you come out of that bath, you'll see yourself extremely relaxed. Hmm. That's that's a good one, yeah. So Epsom salt is something else that we can incorporate into this as well. 
Oh, most definitely. It's very good for your okay. body. Very good, very good. Now, you know, one was a qu- question that I always had is, like, why is it important to realize that although some of the thing may be natural, like the stuff that you're describing, it isn't necessarily always safe. Is that correct? Well, you have to really know what you're purchasing. You know, don't always mm-hmm. assume because someone says it's natural or someone, you know, you have to look at the um, ingredients. Like a lot of times... You know, do you ever see those things you can plug in the wall and you can um, they they squirts out the the smell to make the room smell pretty? Oh yeah, those yeah, yeah, absolutely. Have, do you know what I'm talking about? It has like you know yeah. you, you can buy them in any store and you stick it in the wall or you know and it has those sprays and it's, it you know comes out. It makes the room smell pretty, or even the stuff you can put on your carpet to make the room smell nice. Those things have those lavender smells. They have all those type of nice essence smells, but they're actually very bad for the body. You know, um, yeah. if you look at the ingredients in the back, they might have some lavender smell to it, but they have a lot of toxins in it too. And you know, yeah. um, so you really have to know what you're buying and, and you know, if it's actually good for you and if it's actually natural. Going with a company, you know, that you, you, you've you heard of that actually has a good reputation, it's always good sticking with their products. If, you, if you've if used certain products in the past, you know that they're good, you know, I would suggest maybe using that company. And like I said earlier, check, you know, check that website, consumerlab.com, and, and see, you know, what they say about those companies too. And now, do some of these things actually have bad interactions with maybe medications? And you should check with your doctor to see if, you know, say, you know, I'm just going to throw it out there, say lavender maybe have an effect on something else that you might be using? Well, there's definitely, there's, there's definitely certain, when you take a supplement, a lot of, you know, supplements are just as strong as um, medication. Um I haven't I haven't really heard of any interactions myself personally with lavender, um, but you know they are they are um, different medications that you have to be very careful and you should ask, ask your doctor because herbs um, aren't regulated by the FDA for safety, um, you know, mm-hmm. and there's certain um, and they could be just as strong as prescription drugs like red yeast rice is used to lower cholesterol, you know that that's um, before they went on the market. They used to use that as a prescription. You know, they they mm. sold red yeast rice, and you needed a prescription to buy it. Now you could buy it over the counter. So you know, you could take that, and let's say you're taking a medicine for, you know, a, a, another condition that could interact, depending on the medication you're taking, or the, you know, you may have you may be battling several illnesses and taking several medications. You know, um, you know, you want to be you know very careful. Like um, Saint John Wort um, interacts with a lot of. Um, Antidepressant medications or seizure medications. Um, you could actually, um, people with epilepsy can actually have a seizure using St. John Wort. So you have to really, you know, I say if you're, if you are, if you have conditions, um, mm-hmm. I would, you know, ask your doctor, is it okay if I take this? Because you never know. It could interact and it could cause a problem. Um, your doctor will know um, if it ac- interacts with your medication. And for people with high blood pressure, diabetes, depression, um, blood thinners, uh, you always have to be careful because, you know, they do have a lot of supplements on the market that can interact with those conditions. So always check with your doctor. That makes a lot of sense. Thanks for clarifying that. Um, I definitely wanted to jump into the topic of medical marijuana. Um, What do you think can uh, be some of the benefits of actually using medical marijuana? What are the things that you might think that there's a drawback to it and to this be something that people really start looking into as helping our overall health? Well, there are many cases throughout um, the medical field where uh, marijuana has proven to be a helpful addition to the healthcare care uh, community. Um, people uh, that have um, used uh, uh, marijuana, uh, medical marijuana, have found that it has helped with um, epilepsy, cancer, and different chronic pain illnesses. Um, the THC um, and uh, has helped uh, with uh, different um, 
with different uh, uh, different illnesses and, and con- diseases like cancer. Um, it's uh, been used uh, to help people. Um, you know, many people, uh, you know, think that it has, a, you know, a lot of potential to help many different conditions. There's a list of over 100 conditions that it could possibly be helpful for. And right now, you know, you have a lot of medical universities like NYU doing a lot of studies on it because they feel it could be very beneficial. Um, you know, this is something, you know, that I, I feel, too, could be very helpful. I've seen... You know, I've heard of many cases where kids were having constant seizures and, you know, they couldn't um, get controlled on the medication and they started them with medical marijuana and, you know, a lot of children were helped. Either their, um, their seizures were de- um, significantly decreased or they, were, they stopped um, with the usage of mar- medical marijuana. So there is um, definite potential with the usage of medical marijuana. Um, you know, we need to do more research on it, but, it's, you know, it's definitely something that could be very beneficial for a, a lot of people. And uh, I think, you know, you hear a lot of positive stories about it, and I just hope that the medical community opens up to it. I mean, you know, it, we need as much help <laughs> fighting all of the diseases that are in our society and, uh, what you know, to try to get this on board and get past, like, whatever political agendas that they have. It would be really, really yeah. good for that to, to actually come out and help us. But, um, you yeah, know, thank you for that. Uh, do you find that a lot of people ask you about medical marijuana in your pr- practice? Yeah, you know, a lot of people mention about medical marijuana. You know, there, you know, a lot of people aren't don't have a lot of knowledge in the area. So when you don't have knowledge in the area, you fear it. You know, a lot of people when they think of medical marijuana, they think back to the the 60s and the 70s, and they think that you know that it, you know the world is going to get chaotic if we you know legalize marijuana. But you know. Um, Alcohol is actually worse than marijuana. You can actually you can't overdose on marijuana, but you could overdose and and you you can you can uh, die from toxic toxification of the liver. Um, mm-hmm. You know uh, you can you can have uh, worse effects on alcohol than you can on um, marijuana. And also think about smoking. Smoking is the worst for you. Smoking is worse mm-hmm. than marijuana and alcohol. But they still sell the product and they still legalize it. But yet, it's it, it's you know it's so cancerous, and you know once you you have a pink liver, you have a pink lung. The first time you smoke a cigarette, it turns brown. So you know mm. things like that. They're they're let in society. You know they're legalizing, but things like like you know there's a lot of you know um, you know strings attached where people have to really open up and realize you know there. If, if you legalize it, it's it's not going to – people aren't going to run and, and abuse it. You know, you will have your few that will abuse it, but, it's you know, there's a lot of positive, you know, things that it could actually do to help um, to help a lot of illnesses and conditions. And, you know, uh, it is a lot of po- politics, too, going on. You know, uh, you know, pharmaceutical companies will probably lose a lot of money, you know, if they are able to use medical marijuana for a lot of conditions. So, you know – you know there there are a lot of issues but you know this this is something that we really you know they really need to legalize and have you know laws and, and regulations in every state that are the same and people have to understand you know how beneficial it actually is that it's not you know just you know there are a lot of drugs out there that have more side effects and are far worse than than medical marijuana I totally agree totally agree now on your website you have a section on on health and beauty. Uh, what tips do you have for that and anything specific that you think is, like, one of the most, like, interesting topics regarding the, like, skin care, hair care, and stuff of that nature? Um, you know, with uh, with with uh, moisturizers, you know, people ask about um, wrinkles, and you know, they ask about staying you know, young looking, and, you know, one of the biggest... Um, one of the biggest uh, things is, you know, people get people don't realize, but a lot of wrinkles come when your skin is not moisturized. When you have dry skin, you tend to wrinkle quicker than mm-hmm. you do when you mm. don't have dry skin. And you know, a lot of times, you know, if you're vitamin D deficient, you have dry skin. If you ever look on your skin, it looks dry. You're like, oh, I have dry skin. Well, that probably means you don't have enough of vitamin D in you. So, you oh, know, wow. that's a sign that you might you need, you know, to increase your vitamin D intake. And, you know, if you're not near, you know, 
if you're not in Florida or where it's sunny all the time, you may want to consider, you know, maybe taking a vitamin D supplement. Also, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of there's a lot of good moisturizers. Like, you know, you have kiwi oil, and you have a lot of different aloe oil. is is, is a great, you know, uh, great oil for the for the face and for the body. And you know, there and putting a moisturizer on your skin, you know, um, is is really important to keep your skin moisturized. Those are things that you can, you know, probably. Um, if you're looking to have that, you know, young skin and try to avoid those, you know, crows around your eyes or, you know, to those little wrinkles, you know, it, that, that's a, mm-hmm. a great way mm-hmm. to, to start. Okay. Well, since we were talking, I, I might as well get my selfish question out the way. What about bags <laughs> in the eyes? Oh, yeah. You know, everyone suffers Dark from circles. bags underneath the eyes and yeah, the dark circles, you know, <laughs> and they do have they do have like moisturizers out there for for it. Um, I don't know particularly any any specific um, you know different oils that are really good, but they do say that aloe vera is very good for underneath the eyes. Um, and it keeps it moisturized. But the main thing about bags underneath the eye, a lot of times it comes from a lack of sleep. You know, um, a lot of people mm-hmm. with stress and a lack of sleep it causes those dark eyes, and sometimes it's hereditary. Sometimes, you know, some people in their families, they carry that those dark circles underneath their eyes. But the, the best way that I've seen is, is, is try to, uh, you know, try to get um, a little bit more sleep and, you know, try not to worry so much and, you know, try <laughs> to be a little laxed if you can. <laughs> I don't know how easy yeah. that is to do, but, you know, it, uh, that will definitely you, help it. <laughs> I thought you were going to give me the miracle cure, but I understand you're correct. <laughs> you're absolutely correct. <laughs> oh, boy. But uh, you know what I wanted to say, too, I, I, and I found this the, very interesting about you. Uh, you're also an author of over 20 books. Most people can't do one. Um, many of them outside <laughs> of health and wellness. <laughs> so yeah. why is that, and what is your favorite topic to write about outside of health and wellness? You know, I, I wrote books that had impacts on my life, things that I could relate to, things that I've done, things that have helped me, um, you know, because when, you know, life is very hard and life has many obstacles and we, we cross many journeys and sometimes, you know, those paths aren't very easy and those journeys seem very long and, you know, um, when I have had, you know, had different um, different things in my life, I, you know, I w- look for ways to try to overcome and, and you know, I'm a person who does not like to give up, you know, and if I'm having trouble, I will look for that solution. I will try different ways until I figure out a way that, that it is, that's workable. And, you know, um, I, you know, my, probably my favorite topic um, was, you know, positive thinking. We live in a society where a lot of people are very negative because, you know, life is not easy. We all have come across many things in life, and it could have a, a huge traumatic impact in our lives. You know, one event in our lives can throw us off completely, you know, and a lot of people look at life negatively. A lot of people, you know, it's very hard um, to cope with things, to cope with illness, to cope with, you know, anything, you know, that's, that, you know, that's traumatic and difficult. And, you know, those things can make us very... Um, negative and can can make life, you know, not so good. And, you know, why live life? You have one life to live. Why, you know, why live it in a negative way? And my, my favorite thing was to do a book on the power of positive thinking. Um, it was mm-hmm. the secret to happiness and success uh, to master the power of positive thinking. And, you know, I go over different different techniques and different tools on how you can change your negative way of thinking, turn it into a positive way. And, you know, by by being positive and trying to take the best out of every situation, you know, you could actually turn your life around. Because when you get into those high lows and you're in that low, you can – you know, you can pull yourself out of it, you know, and you can just mm-hmm. keep moving forward, you know, instead of falling in a hole and just staying there, you know, and every day is a dark and dreary day, you know, why live in a dark and dreary world when you can see the bright sun when it's just, you know, outside your door? And, you know, you just have to, you know, there are ways that you can train yourself to to take the best out of every situation. And that's what I talk about in that book. And that was probably, you know, that was probably um, one of my uh, favorite books to write because, you know, it's something that helped me tremendously and it's something I know that everyone struggles with at some point in their life. 
Yeah, I think that's kind of my favorite topic. I've seen even the show evolve into more of a mindset kind of show. Um, one of the things that I would like to ask you about that, too, is like, are there any tips to help people kind of dig their way out of these, you know, doldrums at times? And what was something that's practical that maybe they can get out of something you've written about, about the concept of positive thinking? Well, it was one thing with positive thinking. I always... Um uh, what my thing was is that I, you know, I always say um, everything happens for a reason. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. when things are occurring, sometimes we may not understand why things are happening to us. You know, um, but we need to realize, you know, and think to ourselves, everything is meant to be. You have, you know, something happens. We may not understand the reasoning for it, but you know, in in the long run, we'll figure it out. You know, and somehow we have to take the good out of everything, you know. Like for me, when I had epilepsy, you know, for many years I was very I, very much in denial. I didn't know how to deal with it. I was very angry, um, you know. And, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, I realized by having epilepsy I learned um, that, you know, I, I learned to be more compassionate about my own illness and about other people's illnesses and disabilities. And you know, if if I didn't struggle with my own my own condition, I don't know if I would be that kind, compassionate person that I am to the degree I'm at. Um, you know, I realized by you know what I went through in life, it makes me when I when I talk to others, you know, feel that compassion, understand what people are going through, and I can relate to them. And you know. Um, and, you know, it, that's, you know, to me, that was how I looked at, at my epilepsy. And then what I did was is I took everything, you know, I took what I learned, you know, by living with my illness, and I help others. And to me, that's an accomplishment. You know, you have to, sometimes we have to use our experiences as a learning experience and then see how we can benefit from them. And then, you know, some ways or two is, is to make long-term and short-term goals. You know, um, to, you know, when you're getting yourself out of a rut or you're trying to get to the next level in life, you know, make short-term and long-term goals. We, you know, we can't, we can't um, you know, everything doesn't happen overnight. So we need to, like, you know, set goals for ourselves. You know, maybe what do I want to get, you know, accomplished this week? You know, what would I like to get accomplished next week? What would I like to see myself at in three months? And, you know, you take things day by day and, you know, and, you know, helping people, helping others, doing good things for others. I think that's one of the biggest achievements, you know. And, you know, we, sometimes we live in a me-me society. Everyone, you know, wants to help themselves. But, you know, you could get a lot out of life, and you, it really feels good to be able to reach out and help another person. And I think people should try to do that more often. Very well said, very well said. And listen, I, I think you're an amazing guest. I love what you're doing. I just wanted uh, to give you an opportunity to, again, I, I think we kind of skipped over. you got to tell us about your week because I thought that was the coolest <laughs> thing ever. And number two, <laughs> just you know, tell the audience how to get in touch with you, especially how to get this book, um, which will really, really clarify a lot of the questions people have about supplementation, vitamins, fruits, vegetables, everything. So if you could do those two things, that would be very, very good. Sure. Um, well, this week um, uh, Dr. Oz uh, had invited me on his show on Monday, and then they invited me on his show on Tuesday. Uh, we did a segment on sleep, and then we did a segment on nutrition and protein, and um, it was a really uh, great experience. Um, and uh, for the sleep for the sleep segment, um, I met some really uh, cool people, and um, Ariana um, Huffington was there, and uh, she was a great. Uh, person and she um, is the editor in chief of the Huffington Post and we got to talk in and she was uh, she was just a super nice person and she um, after talking I was telling her about my articles and my books and stuff and I guess she had uh, went on my website and she went on and looked at all my stuff she actually emailed me personally and I got an email from her the next day and she asked me to join her blog and her blog uh, for her the Huffington Post and she asked me to write for her and do some stuff for her and uh and do a book review for her and I was really excited about that and um and then I had a great time with Dr. Oz. He's a super guy and he's uh done a lot of good for people and he's the friendliest individual. He's just a, he's just a really nice guy and uh I had a lot of fun taping the segments and uh it was a really fun experience. Um and then uh for my website uh 
you know, uh, I have a website. Um, we have over uh, 3,000 um, articles on our website. We uh, cover all different conditions, and uh, we talk about different natural ways to um, cure common conditions. And um, I also have my books on there, too. I have my Complete Herbal Guide and um, Natural Remedies for Common Conditions uh, on there, and they're also available on Amazon. Um, my website is uh, www. Um, dot the complete herbal guide dot com and uh, it goes over everything if you want to learn about herbal supplements how to eat right exercise it covers it and we have a lot of things about product reviews and book reviews and um, there's a lot of interesting stuff on the website so um, you know come check us out and if you have questions you know we always answer everybody's questions so feel free to shoot us an email and uh, we'll be happy to answer anything. How long has that website been uh in you know up and rolling? We've been up for about 3 years now. Close to about oh. two and a half going on 3 years, yeah. Yeah, no, it's very 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 good. Like I mean, it is just it touches so many different topics. So I definitely urge the audience to definitely take a look at it because it's very comprehensive. There's tons of information. Like you said, over 3,000 articles. It's just, it was a really, really uh, <laughs> great, well-written, very impressive. Uh, thank you. <laughs> we also have a yeah, lot no, of doctors and experts that, that come on, too. And, they, you know, if you have questions, you know, they will answer anybody's questions, too. Yeah, no, it was very, very, very nice. Uh, well, listen, Dave, I, I, I want to thank you again for being on the show. It's been a real absolute pleasure, and uh, good luck in everything. And uh, when is this Dr. Oz thing airing so we can check take a look at it? Uh, from what they told me, I think in the next week or two they're going to be um, they're going to be airing it. And um, if you go on their website, they should list their shows. They have, I think, one on sleep deprivation, and then one on nutrition and. Uh, and uh, health, so uh, it should be Aaron in a week or two. Sounds great. Stacy, again, thank you for being on the show. You have a great night. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was Stacy Chalemi. Yeah, you know what? She had a, a great week. It was Ariana Huffington, and then Dr. Oz, then she came on our show. <laughs> so we're very excited to be in that company. Um, she has a great website, like I was mentioning, tons of resources all about natural remedies. Uh, please check it out. You won't be disappointed. This is Omar Carmabesh from the Wellness Ultimatum Radio Show. Thank you for listening, and have a great night.